Yeah, there are a couple of beads. There are a couple of beads roaming around out there. Two of them are your your basic. Uh, two of them are your basic glow beads that I'm going to do tonight, and a couple of them are are little variations on the theme where I took a cobalt base bead, put some white dots on it, flatten them out a little bit, and then put the white dots in the glow powder, and then encase those and put silver and ivory stringer around them. Just you can get kind of bored making white beads with aquamarine encasement on them for, for a long period of time. They have to be white? I, did, I went through a long process of, of coming up with this particular combination and what I found was if you want to get a nice radiation blue, you know, if, you've, if you've ever seen the picture taken inside a nuclear reactor, you can get this nice blue glow. Josh Simpson talks about that a lot. It's Cherenkov radiation blue. It's one of the one of the colors or shades of blue that he spent a lot of time developing with silver glass. If you want to get that really nice radiation blue in this bead, the best combination that I found is white glass with the aqua over the top of it. And I tried lots of other things, and then there there are some colors when you put it together, it just disappears. Which aqua? Uh, you can use either the light or the medium. Uh, I use Moretti or Ephetra. So, did you invent the seed? Uh, I'm not sure I would go so far as to say I invented it, but I came up with the idea of using this for the radiation bead. We were talking about this with the Beads of Courage people, and they were saying, uh, the guys here in town, we're, we're kicking around the idea that we needed something to use for end of treatment for a number of different things. It's, it's hard to talk to people through the top of this, <laughs> this visor. So while this is cooling off, I'll, I'll raise it up a little bit. Um, we needed some end of treatment beads. And the commercially produced beads are okay, but the end of treatment is really sort of a special occasion and you need something a little more exotic. So I sent off for some glow powder and started trying combinations until I found one that really did what I wanted it to. Now, just while I'm, I'm going through the dull process of making your, your basic white base bead that's not too far out around, uh, we have two Beads of Courage programs running in Atlanta right now. We've got the Eggleston campus over at Emory and Scottish Rite with a total of around 600 kids in treatment, which is a lot of kids and a lot of beads. Uh, if you're, everybody's seen the bead guide that floats around with the, the various colors and things on it they use for specific treatments. For the most part, those color beads, I'm just gonna flatten it a little bit, slop it up a little. For the most part, those beads are commercially produced and the beads that that we make go for uh, special occasions. Active courage beads, if they've, they've been through a difficult procedure or had a tough time, end of treatment beads, that sort of thing. So if you want to make beads, don't worry about the color guide so much. Make beads. Uh, about the size of the ones that I handed around is, is perfect. You don't need to make big honking beads. We go through lots and lots of them that are just that a little bit bigger than spacer size. Uh, the next program that's coming up, uh, I just run this through the flame one more time. I uh, just found out the other day that the Bacchus Children's Hospital in Savannah is going to be the third program in Georgia. Uh, Gene's coming to town sometime in December, and I don't have a start date for them yet, but we'll be uh, we'll be trying to support them as much as we can along with the Savannah community. Okay, what I've got here now is your basic white bead. The core is white. You know, you get white glass hot, it goes clear on you. So what I want to do is shape it, keep the core of the bead reasonably cool, and just heat the surface. Get the outside hot so that it's sticky. Roll it through the powder. Before you pick it up again, Tap it a couple of times. That lets the excess fall off. 
you see those bright red streamers popping off of there? That's, that's the strontium burning off. Strontium is used a lot as, as a red colorant in fireworks. You want to melt this in. If you try to put the aqua glass on before you melt it in, the aqua glass won't stick to it. And the stuff doesn't stick to itself very well. So I'm going to melt that in, get the outside hot again, try to keep the inside cool. And with a small bead like this, that's, I'm sure you are familiar with that being a little bit of a challenge. But you don't want to get the inside too hot because you don't want it to smush out too bad when you roll it in the stuff a second time. I've gotten pretty good pickup on this, so we'll probably just let it go with two. Just want to knock that excess off so you're not blowing it around the room. You do want to work with this with good ventilation, right? Everybody has good ventilation. Say yes. 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 Good. Everybody. Okay, we're getting it melted in. It's it's. Um, this is actually a little bit stickier than the powder I've got. I got a, a much better pickup. Where did, where did you get this one? It's, it's, yeah, I got mine from Arrow Springs. It's kind of interesting that you'd see a little bit of difference here because I think probably the same people actually make most of it. Do you think it's a humidity thing? Um, it's kind of dry right now. It's a little dry. I don't think that's it. It's just, you know, maybe they cut it with something. <laughs> it puts, that's terrible. It's adulterated. So I get a nice blob of, of aqua going here. Heat up the surface so that it will stick, but you don't want the core hot so that it doesn't sh smush around on you. I'm not worried about having a really neat job of encasing on this thing. The reason being that if you get a little bit of unequal thickness in your your aqua because you you're gonna heat the thing up and spread it out really nicely before you're done. If you've got a little bit of variation in there then you get a little bit of variation in the glow. And when you get it sitting in the dark you'll get a little brighter spot here, a little darker spot there, a little bit of variation in color and it gives it a, sort of a, a texture to the color. So at this point I have, and I was not at all happy with it. it um, I tried doing it with, with clear, and it just got chunky. Yeah, that's it, did, it, that, yeah. it didn't pull evenly, but um, I think that's at least in part because it, it doesn't really contain any, any glass itself. And getting it dispersed evenly in Stringer, it just, just doesn't seem to work real well. I mean, I've, I've pulled stringer with enamel before and not had a problem. It, it doesn't chunk up as badly as, as this stuff does. And then just, just round it out. And I, I try to, to keep the core of the bead from getting too hot. Heat it on the sides. Let your aqua sort of spread out a little bit. Does it have to be round? It doesn't have to be absolutely round. If you want to square it up, that's an interesting idea. I haven't tried that. Yeah, as long as it glows in the dark. It glows in the dark, has a hole in the middle, and doesn't have sharp edges on the bead holes, then that's just exactly what you need. You know, the, whole, the whole thing is very flexible. And that is it. And these things really glow when they first come out of the torch, too. If you go straight, it's got a lot of energy in there. If you go straight.